When a force acts on an object, it is often transmitted to a focal point. A focal point could be considered the centre of mass of a free moving object, the midsection of a gear shaft under load, or a pinhead point of contact against the surface. The force transmission could be focused in a single direction, or multiple forces could be at play which could require balancing or overriding in a particular direction. A force is a vector quantity consisting of a magnitude and direction, and as such can be illustrated by scale drawing, calculation or by combination of both. Starting with the point of focus, the first force, F1, and direction of action can be drawn to a scale, let's say one inch or centimetre per newton of force. A second force of half the magnitude acting in the same direction would be drawn at half the length. The total force could be calculated by combining the measurement of the two forces and drawing a new line, or by simply adding the two forces. Opposing forces could be drawn similarly, and the resultant force calculated by deducting the smallest from the largest force. Forces acting on a point have both size and direction values. A force can be acting up to 180 degrees counterclockwise horizontally or minus 180 degrees clockwise from horizontal. A positive force acting at 30 degrees can be drawn to scale with a secondary force acting at say 120 degrees. A negative force acting at minus 45 degrees would look as shown. A negative force acting at minus 170 degrees would look as shown. In this scenario, the forces again can be resolved by drawing to scale or by calculation. The triangle of forces method allows for the resolution of two forces acting in different directions. The forces can be stacked by redrawing to scale F2 at the angle of the point of interaction from the head of F1. Drawing a line between the point and force stack will give the total load and direction, assuming F1 and F2 were drawn to scale. By measurement, both angle and force magnitude can be identified using the triangle of forces method. An alternative method of graphical representation is the parallelogram of forces method. For replicating force F2, followed by replicating F1, forms a parallelogram. The resultant diagonal line represents the combined force profile and gives both force and angle of interaction. The parallelogram of forces method can be calculated and it could be useful to use both scale drawing and mathematical methods to double check each other. The method involves elements of trigonometry. First, retitle the sides a, B and C, C being the missing resultant force to calculate. Then retitle the angles A, B and C with capital letters, all angles being opposite a corresponding face. Angle C is a straightforward calculation. Deducting the angle of action 70 degrees from 180 degrees gives C at an angle of 110 degrees. Angle B can be ignored as we have all the information we need to calculate the resultant force, magnitude and angle of action. From the cosine rule for calculating sides, C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2 times A times B cosine angle C, the square root of which gives a force magnitude of 9.89 newtons. The angle of resultant action can now be calculated from the sine rule. Side and angle A equals side and angle C, from which sine angle A equals side A sine angle C over side C. The inverse sine of which gives an angle of 
41.65 degrees. So a total resultant force of 9.896 newtons acts at an angle of 41.65 degrees to the point. The calculation checks out against the graphical method, giving the same force and angle of interaction. The parallelogram of forces method works when both forces are offset from zero. In this second example, the first force acting on the point is 5 newtons acting at 30 degrees. The second is 7 newtons acting at minus 70 degrees. The subsequent parallelogram can be drawn. F2 is offset by 30 degrees from F1. The resultant force can also be drawn, and if we were drawing to scale, it could be measured. But for the purpose of this example, we need to label the angles, capitals A, B and C. Angle C is first to calculate. Deducting 70 and 30 from 180 degrees gives 80 degrees. The cosine rule can be used again for the resultant force magnitude. Sides A, B and angle C used to calculate side C. C being the resultant force of 7.86 newtons. The sine rule is again used for angle A. Reworking for sine A and inversing gives an angle of 61.23 degrees. But in this example, this is not the angle of action. And the angle of F1 action must be deducted from angle A. Therefore, the angle of resultant force action is 30 degrees minus 61.23, giving an angle of action of minus 31.23 degrees. In the next video, we'll look at the resolution of forces method, and this will help us when there are more than two force vectors involved.